An alternative to a pointer is the so-called reference. Similar to a pointer, a reference allows you to execute changes on another variable without copying it. Therefore, you can also pass a variable as a reference into a method. By doing that, you don't have to copy the variable and you can perform changes on that variable inside the method itself. Like discussed in a previous video, for pointers you have to ensure that they are always valid before working with them. In contrast, references can generally be considered as valid if your code structure supports correct use of references. Let's have a look on how you can declare variables for references. First, you have to write the data type. Next, you have to use the reference operator to indicate that this variable is a reference. And like always, you also have to provide a name for this reference. Now, there is a catch. For pointers, it would be valid to just write the declaration statement like for normal variables. However, like mentioned before, references should be considered as being valid. And therefore, just declaring a reference is not valid and you have to also initialize it when declaring it. For that, you can just provide another variable. So let's look at a concrete example. First, we create an integer with a value of 10. Next, we declare and initialize an integer reference to the value we have just created. If we change now the value of the reference, we can see that also the value of the original variable changes. Also, if we change the value of the original variable, the value of the reference gets also changed. This is the case since the reference and the variable are the same object in memory. When working with pointers, we had to manually dereference them to work on the object that is stored in memory. But as you can see, when using references, you can work on it like your standard variables. Next, I want to briefly describe how to use references inside methods. Here we have a normal method where we add two integers together. In here, we copy the values of the integers that gets passed in to this method and then return the result of the operation. When using references, you can remove the aspect of copying values and like mentioned before, you can also change the value of variables inside the method itself. Therefore, we can adjust the add method like this to make use of references. First, to indicate that our arguments are references, we again have to use the reference operator after the data type. Also, as you can see, I have provided an additional argument for the result that is also marked as a reference. This variable will get changed inside the method and should store the result of the add operation. When you write the value of a reference inside the method, it is common to indicate this with the out prefix in the name of the argument. Now we can say that the result variable should store the result of the addition of both other variables. When using the method in code, it would look like this. We create the variables as normal and then just pass them into the method like usual. However, since we have indicated in the argument declaration that all of the variables are references, we pass them to the method as such. Then when logging the result, you can see that the method changed the value of the variable that we have declared here. Since you can only return one value with the return statement, passing references to a method are one way to get more information about operations inside the method. Like mentioned before, references are generally regarded as valid, as long as your code ensures that. For that, you have to ensure that the lifetime of a reference is less than the lifetime of the original variable. For example, if you would return a reference to a local variable that was declared inside of a method, then the lifetime of the local variable is only inside this method. However, now we would have exposed an invalid reference to this local variable. Also, if you allocate dynamic memory using the new keyword and then create a reference to this pointer and then delete this dynamic allocated memory, you still have a reference to this variable, which now has become invalid. So 
if you think about returning references to local variables, it is better to just pass an additional variable as a reference to this method. And when you would like to use references to pointer, like with the dynamic allocated memory, maybe just use the pointer itself instead. For the first exercise, write the difference between pointers and references in the comments. For the second exercise, create a swap method. This method should have two integer references as arguments. The functionality of this method should be that you swap the values of the two integers that were provided to this method. Like always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Otherwise, see you next time.